Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome, hope everyone's doing good. Um, if you see my last video then you know that I filmed these back to back so that's why I'm wearing the same clothes, I'm not like dirty or anything. Um, today's going to be a bit of a different video because um, I'm going to be delving into the spooky side of my channel. Um, if you know me then you know that I have experiences with the paranormal you don't have to believe me obviously everyone has their own beliefs I'm like I don't want to claim to be stuff but I am kind of like clairvoyant or whatever you want to call it so I am interested in people's stories of their paranormal experiences so I actually set out on my reddit and created two threads at two different times because I was going to film this video like a year ago but then my anxiety flared up and I couldn't bring myself to do it so I set up two threads basically saying tell me your real spooky stories obviously I cannot guarantee that these stories are real they're just what people are claiming are real but I'm going to read them to you and then I'm going to read out my response from one of my experiences and I'm telling you that was real but obviously you do not have to believe me um, if you ever want to sort of jump on my threads because you're into this kind of stuff, my reddit username thing is spookygal98, I'll pop it on the screen, um, and then you can like comment on my threads if you wish. Yeah, so, first one was this one, and I basically put, let's get a thread of true paranormal slash spooky stories. And then in the like comment bit, I put, I want to get a thread going of true stories so I know I'm not going crazy and not alone in the fact that dead people tried to contact me. That was me trying to be funny, but it's also true. But also for my possible YouTube video, share some of yours and I'll share some of mine. Now, I'm not going to include their usernames because I don't, nobody said whether they want it to be anonymous or not. This is the first one that is on my, this is the first thread that I made. So the first one says, this one happened very recently. Last year, when my daughter was around four months old, she was sleeping in her crib with the nursery door open. I was in the middle of doing laundry and I walked past her nursery carrying the laundry basket. When I glanced in there, I saw my grandpa staring by, standing by her crib, watching over her for only a brief moment. I like to think that he had just stopped by to check on her. He had died about two years prior to that. Ah, oh, see, so that is a nice one. Obviously, you do have to be careful because if you watch horror films and stuff you know that when it comes to like demonology and spirits and stuff they can pretend to be someone that they're not so it's best to not try and contact your like loved ones or your family members because it can let other things through and they can like manipulate you into thinking that they're good when they're not however obviously not every case is that case um, but that is really nice. That is a nice one to have on. That's so cute. The next one says, My mother has always had weird things happen to her since she was a kid. A little girl that used to pull her hair, an old lady that used to stroke her hair, a, a World War One soldier screaming at her at the end of her bed. Oof, that is terrifying. And a house that was full of evil. The house had to get knocked down in the end because people kept dying there and no one would buy it. I've been woken up in the middle of the night to a little girl throttling me before. I had bruises on my neck and the next day I had a crazy sore throat. See that's more of the scary side. When it gets like physical and you start showing signs that you need to sort of... I'm not an expert so I don't want people to take all my advice. That's like expert advice because I'm not. I deal with my experiences. And I try to learn. The good people to watch are, if you watch Hayley Reese, she is like very similar to me, but she's had more physical sort of experiences where mine's like more mental and emotional. Um, so I watch a lot of Hayley Reese's videos and also Lowy Lane like delves into it as well. But um, Hayley Reese is pretty good to watch if you want like good advice. But the best thing you can do is to, if you have loads of negative energy in you they feed on it so you need to like fill your body with positive energy and like good vibes you can also try telling them 
that they're not welcome because they it's your realm they need your permission to be here um but yeah you need to like keep your aura white and your pos and your energy positive so i'm just gonna read off my one um i'm gonna read it off of here because it's easier than me trying to like think and it will run smoother so this is my story so i have a friend called holly who will probably be on in some videos and she doesn't mind me sharing the story i've already asked her we've only been friends for i think almost two years uh but her mum died a few years before we became friends so i've never even seen a picture of her i don't know what she looks like i never met her or anything so that's what makes the story really bizarre so Holly wanted to change her top, so we popped into her house, and I never really go to hers, so this was like literally the longest I've ever stopped at her house, apart from a time where I stayed, like slept over there. Um, and we were sat in her front room, and she was showing me a snow globe that had a music box in, so she had wound it up, and the music was playing. And naturally, we just let it play. She then decided to go upstairs and change her top, and um she placed the snow globe next to the tv and the the tune stopped halfway through so i was like me being me because i'm a horror fanatic i was like oh something spooky is gonna happen now because it was like in the move in a horror movie where the sound box just stops like randomly and then obviously nothing happened but when i looked up from my phone at the armchair in the corner of the room I suddenly became really overwhelmed and emotional and I didn't see anything there like I, I'm not gonna claim that I saw a shadow or anything because I didn't but I could sense that there was something there like I could sense it's almost like my brain could see it but my eyes couldn't that doesn't even make sense but that is genuine how it was it's like there was something there I could feel that there was something in that chair but I couldn't physically see it myself and it was really scary well, it wasn't scary, I wasn't scared, but it was really overwhelming. Um, so then, without even meaning to, like I didn't even want to say it. it's not something that I would say, I'm not like, I'm not really like that with feelings or anything. I just went, I'll look after her. Like I said, I'll look after her. And that's not something that I would just randomly say, but I did just randomly say, I didn't even think about it. It just literally just came out. So I stayed there in my chair and I just held my gaze at the chair that I sent something in and I literally just started crying, like tears just started flooding out of my eyes and, but I wasn't like actually crying so I wasn't like going, ooh, 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 like making noises or anything, it, my eyes were just like tearing up and I was like crying without actually crying. This doesn't make sense but it genuinely happened and I wasn't scared, I just felt very overwhelmed and that is something that people say they feel when you know when they have these kind of experiences um so yeah so that happened um and then after that i believe i went i'm gonna stop reading off of this now because it's easier for me to just explain it i went i decided to move through to the other the room next to it which is like a kitchen and sitting area um to go get my shoes on ready for when Holly came back down because we were gonna go out again. So I came, like, I went to the front door, which is where all the shoes were, and directly in front of the front door is the stairs. So you come through the front door and the stairs are like here. Um, and as I turned around, there was this leaflet that had in massive letters, thank you. And I'm not saying it wasn't there before, but I didn't notice it and I noticed it straight away when I turned around this time. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Cause obviously I've been like, I'll look after her. And now I'm seeing something that says, thank you. And then while I was putting my shoes on, I breathed in and I could smell incense, like the burning of the incense sticks. But the next time I breathed in, the smell was gone and it was like, nothing was ever there. So I literally was like, inhaled, smelt it, exhaled, inhaled, nothing absolutely like completely gone and then after this holly had come back downstairs so we were like ready to go and i was debating whether to tell her in the house or like tell her at all or wait till we got in the car but i waited till we got in the car and um so i explained it to her i explained everything to her like the snow globe stopping the thing in the corner 
and the incense and when i said about the incense she actually almost stopped the car like mid traffic because she was like shocked and it was after that that she explained to me that the snow globe was what her mum had gave, given to her or like it was something that they shared together while she was still here um the armchair that i was sensing the presence in was where her hospital bed was while she was at home and she used to burn incense sticks all the time i like to think that i communicated with her mum but obviously i can't be certain and i i will never sit there and say to holly that was your mum because i don't want to give her hope that her mum is like lingering around um it was quite chilling i've never met her so i don't even know what she looks like but i felt something i communicated with something and i can just i didn't feel at harm i didn't feel like the house had a bad energy in it i just felt overwhelmed because that's what happens when you encounter a spirit like that and that i think to this day is the most i've ever felt like spiritually and it was quite it didn't scare me because it was a ghost it was just scary because i didn't know what i was feeling and i was trying to work out what what and why i was feeling that way but obviously i hope that um it was her mum we're gonna go on to my second thread which i called you probably can't see i'll tell you mine if you tell me yours so i obviously posted mine out again and then this other and then somebody else commented and i did tell them that i was going to put it on youtube when i made it so i'll let them know this up at some point um, so they put, bit late to the party here, but why not? I used to work at a Holiday Inn, five stories tall, 200 rooms with a large ballroom for parties and other events. The hotel was a well known, was well known as haunted by the employees, though for some reason the guests rarely encountered anything. The haunting varied in terms of how active it was, but while the ghost could be playful and mischievous, stealing sheets from housekeeper's carts and putting them onto someone else's cart was a favourite prank of theirs especially against new hires. They were never threatening, except for this one incident. The 4th of July week was always a dead one for the hotel as people rarely travelled for that holiday. On the, third of the ho on the 3rd, the hotel only had 20 rooms occupied, so it was only the front desk girl, the executive housekeeper, myself, and one other housekeeper on duty that day. All of the rooms were on the first and second floors, and I had the second floor rooms. All of the guests were out for the day, so it was just the four staff members in the building. Par for the course in my part of the US during that time of the year. Par. Oh. It was very windy outside. Let me give you the layout of where I was at the time. The hallways were long, each holding 44 rooms, even numbered on one side, odd numbered on the other. The elevator lobby was located between rooms 10 and 12 and had a large floor to ceiling windows that overlooked the atrium slash lobby the lobby had four had walls that were mostly glass at each end and so it was always brightly lit during the daylight hours the lobby had walls that were mostly glass at each end and so it was always brightly lit during the daylight hours the light shone through the windows by the elevators and lit up that section of the hallway very well I just finished cleaning my second to last room, which was down towards the far end of the hallway, away from the elevators, and I had to, and I had run out of bath towels, so I began the long walk towards the elevators to go down to the laundry room and get more. Due to the high winds outside, the lights had been flickering all day, but I wasn't worried. Power outages in that area were rare, and I was used to the regular windstorms that we got hit with every year. So I was not prepared when the hallway suddenly went completely dark. The lights went out and I was plunged into total darkness. I stopped where I was while I waited for the emergency lights to come on. They didn't. You know when you can feel if someone's standing right behind you, even when you can't see them? That's what I suddenly felt while I was standing there. I knew that someone was right behind me, so close that I swore that I could almost feel them touching me. The hair on the back of my neck stood up and I heard breathing immediately behind me and slightly above, like whoever was whoever it was was much taller than me i felt icy cold breath against my neck and though every instinct i had was screaming at me to run i stayed rooted to the spot that's like a fight or flight moment like you either run or you just stick around and he's obviously gone into fight mode but i stood there for what seemed like forever until the lights came back on as suddenly as they had gone out 
The feeling of someone behind me vanished, but I didn't look back. I ran the rest of the way to the elevators and thankfully one was there waiting for me. Our elevators were also occupied and said occupant was pretty friendly. Well, that's a good side note. I rode it down to the first floor and wandered into the laundry room. My boss said I looked like I'd seen a ghost. I kind of just laughed and asked her about the power outage we just have. She gave me a strange look and said the power had been out for less than a second before coming back on. I stared at her. Less than a second? It was then that I realised the emergency lights had not come on and the bright that the bright light from the elevators had also been missing during my, my ordeal. However, I don't know how I managed it, but I merely pushed it to the side, gathered up the towels I needed and went back upstairs. I was more than a little nervous heading back up, but I never experienced anything like that again. Another co-worker co-worker wouldn't be so lucky a handful of years later that would actually scare the crap out of me because obviously i don't judging by that it would have felt like maybe something threatening if you feel like you can't turn around or that you're frozen to the spot it might be that your body can sense that it's a negative energy and that would terrify me i'm not gonna like pretend that i'm not scared i'm only not scared when i can feel like it's like a good vibe not a bad vibe but if i worked in a hotel i have seen enough ho <laughs> hotel scary movies to not work in a hotel ever but yeah no, that would really scare me like i said i don't know if this is true i'm guessing it's true i'm hoping it's true obviously it sucks for them that it, if it is true but i hope it's true because i like to share true experiences but i'd love to know what happened to the co-worker though Another co-worker wouldn't be so lucky a handful of years later. Like, let me know. Carry that story on. But yeah, so. If anyone else has had any creepy hotel stories, I'd be keen to hear them. Definitely. But yeah, thank you for sharing that one. I will comment so that they know that I've put it up so then they can look at it. Somebody else has put, I've seen my grandmother and my brother in a hall, in my hallway. Oh no, I've seen my grandmother and my brother in my bedroom. Once I saw a threatening figure in the hallway next to my bedroom. That was fun. So I'm assuming grandmother and brother has unfortunately passed away and that they are also ghosts. That isn't threatening. You can, I mean it's obvious that if you see, obviously, if you don't believe in this kind of stuff and you see your deceased relatives siblings and stuff it is gonna scare you but if you do believe in it then that's like it's almost like comforting because you know that someone's there but you just have to be really careful just in case it's not actually them but the threatening figure in the hallway that's not fun obviously you like i said before you want to be like stern and strong in your answer and just say you are not welcome here if that doesn't work then there are other methods again i'm not an expert but you also have to make sure that you try and keep a positive energy in you because they feed off of negative. Okay, one more long one and then there's the funny one that actually did make me laugh. So this person has said, this story happened over the winter. It all started as a normal night out and my friend CJ and I were hanging out just discuss discussing our usual subjects, his weapon collection, video games and normal things. We were sitting there and another one of our friends calls us and says, Hey, do you mind if I hang out with you guys? Uh, we said, sure, because we were already bored out of our minds. We call, we'll call him Don. Don says, well, I got my car. We can go shoot off our friend CJ's weapons. We all agree because we've done it many times and we go to the middle of the woods and no one bothers us. We leave and are on our way. We thought we knew the way to the location we were going to because we've gone out there constant time, many times. But that was our first mistake. We ended up getting lost. This is a crucial. This is crucial to the story. Thank God for my friend Don's car at the time. It was an off-roading Ford Escape. We went down this narrow path that was very windy and heavily wooded. At this moment, we also realised we crossed states from PA to WV. I'm not American, so I don't know what that is, but 
I'm sure many people will. We finally believe we've made it to the path that we got that we knew got us to where we normally go, but it wasn't. And all of a sudden, CJ and I look at each other. We are both as pale as winter's moonlight that night. He says to me, do you feel like we're being watched? Me, who openly admits to being a Satan worshipper and believes in demons and does some witchcraft, says, I do believe something is watching us, but it's not natural. Dawn starts laughing and says, well, we are near the place they filmed Silent Hill. We all nervously chuckle, but it wasn't until our car stopped. Um, Dawn's lights hit the path and it's covered in snow and a giant flooded stream is in our way. He goes and says, one of us has got a get out. I look at him and say, no chance I'm getting out. And CJ says, nope, I'm not leaving this car. As he said that, he loaded a silver case, cased round in his pistol and he held it close. Dawn gets out and he says, it's actually nice out there, peaceful and quiet. I get out as well and, when it, and it, that's when the fog rolled in. It was heavy and it was, un, it was very unusual. That's when I looked over and saw a giant fresh blood mark in the snow. I called on over and he looks at it and it and is taken away by what he saw and dismisses it and says an animal an animal probably got attacked here but I interrupted him and said there's no prince or nothing he turns to me and says well we gotta keep across this creek we gotta get across this creek which is not too deep to cross we finally all are starting to feel like prey we crossed the creek and decided to turn around barely making it through this path that was made for quads, not a no for escape. We finally got out, but whatever it was was waiting at the end of the trail. It was something I can't even explain. It was way too big to be a dog or what or wild, and it was making almost human-like screams. His eyes were bright green. CJ and I discussed that it could have been a skin crawler because there were deer around it, and the deer didn't even know us, but we did. That is creepy. First of all, I was not expecting the like low-key satan worshipper drop in that story and second of all the, the whole like skin crawler and what is it when windy goes or whatever like situation is quite scary i don't really know if i believe in it or not i've not really looked into it that kind of side of it i'm very not knowledgeable about but that's a very interesting story. There is, there's always stories about that, but n people never believe it and they always say that it's fake. But I do believe that there is possibilities of things like that have happened. Obviously, I just, I've never experienced it. Here's the funny one. I woke up around 3 a.m. one morning and something was telling me not to go into the bathroom, but I still had the urge to do so. So I got up out of bed and force, and a force drew me to the bathroom. I go in there and look up at the mirror and what I seen what I've seen is terrifying. It was myself. Relatable. But that is all the scary stories that are on my two threads. Obviously, I will have put my, I'll link my like Reddit down below. So if you want to add to it, you can, and then maybe it'll be in a different video or I'll make a new thread for a different video. But I like, I'm not one to put down people's stories because I know what it's like for people to not believe you. It's very, like, down-putting. Um, but yeah, so that was, like, the intro to the spooky side of my story. Um, I'm sorry that last one I was a bit, like, stop and start. The grandma wasn't, like, obviously someone's typed it online and you know what. When you're typing online, you can make quite a few mistakes. So I was, like, reading it without pre-reading it. So I was trying to like make it flow but then it didn't really work because there was a few mistakes. But yeah, so I will be posting more spooky stuff very soon. I'm not sure what my next one's going to be. It might just be a video of my experiences or something. But um, yeah, so welcome to the spooky sofa part. This is my second video that I filmed today. Um, and I'm trying to do a third but I don't know if I can bring my motivation back up to do a third. But we shall see. But yeah, so. Bye. Um, see you in my next video, hopefully. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Send me, like, ideas of what people want me to film. Send me constructive criticism. Don't just be a hater. You will just get blocked. Um, don't forget, if you're... I'm always going to leave, like, a little mental health message somewhere in my video. Um, I hope everyone's doing great today, and if you're not, just hang in there, it does get better. And just talk to someone, my Twitter, and like, you can DM me and I can talk to you about it, 
or you can talk to professionals but yeah so there's always people you can talk to but yeah see you in my next video bye